You're listening to The Kelly Track Show. I'm your host, Kelly Track, author, coach, and eternal optimist. Each week, I'll give you lessons to elevate your life, reclaim your personal power, and truly awaken and transform. Your best life starts right now. Hey, my friends, welcome back. Thank you, as always, for tuning in and for listening. I always appreciate you hanging out with me for the hour, and thank you so much for downloading the show, especially if you're brand new. Welcome. And if you've been here for a long time, howdy. (laughs) I don't know why I said howdy, but it felt really fitting, even though I don't think I've ever said howdy once on the podcast. (laughs) Welcome back, my friends. So support for today's episode comes from Teachable. Teachable is this online course creation platform. It's where I host my top selling online self-study course, Your Best Life, which is all about mastering your mindset. And it's where I'm going to be hosting the Inner Circle, which is my mastermind group. It's brand new. So if you're hearing about it for the first time, yes, it's brand spanking new and you can put your name on the wait list if you want a discount and get notified when we open the doors for enrollment. Now I love Teachable because it's so easy and it's so intuitive and simple to use as both the person who's making my own school and my own curriculum and for my students who enroll in my class. With Teachable, it's so simple. They just get the link, they enroll in my self-study course at any time they need. And I love it because it can host so much data. Your best life has something absurd. It's got, it's like 308 gigabytes of data. That's like a small iPod when they first made the iPod, which is crazy to think of how much high-res content is in that thing. And Teachable is just so easy and so intuitive. So if you're looking to make an online course and you're looking to generate some passive income for yourself, I would so recommend Teachable. And because you are a listener of the show, when you sign up through the link in the show notes, you get access to their three free classes on how to build your first course. And most importantly, you get access to eight free weeks of live training from them. So that's got $1,000 in value that you get for free because you're rolling with me. Now, today on the pod, I'm super excited to have Jenna Daly on the show. So if you are new to Jenna, Jenna is a photographer, storyteller, yoga teacher, and social media specialist by trade. Somewhere along her path, creative expression became an intrinsic part of her identity. And now she constantly seeks out opportunities to put her creativity to work. Jenna's core values, which she puts into practice daily, are creativity, connection, choice, passion, and nature. When she's not working, she's pursuing her passions of traveling the world, hiking, writing, and seeking out opportunities to experience, learn, and grow. And she lives to spend time with family and friends, read real books, not digital ones, and yes, run the occasional Netflix marathon every now and then. So my friends, this episode is so fun, so juicy, and just so grounded in authentic truth, which is so true to the Jenna Daly style. So my friends, we're going to just jump right in. Welcome to the show, Jenna. I'm super excited to have you here. Thank you for having me, Kelly. It is an honor. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Okay, so I have some Jenna Daly themed rapid fire Q&A for you. Before we get started. (laughs) Okay, I didn't see that one coming. (laughs) Okay. Mala beads or silver beads? Mala beads. Matcha or coffee? Matcha. Wearing just a sports bra to yoga or a sports bra and top? Sports bra and top, although I am working on being comfortable in just the sports bra. Candid portrait or laughing portrait? Laughing. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Rock your (laughs) bliss retreat or rock your bliss online program? Uh, Retreat. (laughs) Meditation or yin yoga? Yin. Mountains or ocean? Mountains, baby. Teaching a class or taking a class? Taking. (laughs) Being in front of the camera or being behind the camera? Oh, way behind. (laughs) You look great in front of the camera, too. Well, thank you. Home practice or studio practice? Studio practice. Favorite crystal right now? Rose quartz. Mm, Yeah, always pretty. Favorite book right now? Oh, I am reading Come As You Are. Oh. Um, I'm going to butcher it, yeah, by Emily Nagoski. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, only like halfway through. So good. Highly recommend if you haven't already. 
Oh my God. Yes. I love that book. She is amazing. I am learning so much. <laughs> oh my God. I know. I read that book and I was like, oh my God, I wish I had this like 10 years ago. <laughs> right? You're like, I know nothing. <laughs> I know. I wish that that was like, honestly, part of my high school curriculum um, in terms of like sex ed and being normal and not thinking that you're weird or the only person. Right. And I think male, female, everyone needs to read it. Yeah, I agree. And I also read that thing so quickly because she's like the funniest writer and she writes so well. And it's quite a big book, like when you look at it. But I mean, I read that thing in like a couple of nights because I was like, I'm obsessed. <laughs> yeah, it's an easy read. She's a phenomenal writer. Yeah. Um, and then the last question is biggest takeaway from your yoga practice. It's all a practice. Yoga, life, everything. So it's, you got to try new things. You got to be a beginner and you have to be okay with wherever you are, whenever you are. Mm, yes. That's so beautiful. So drop me into the first hour of your day. I know it's afternoon for you, but what did your first hour of your day look like this morning? And what did you eat for breakfast? Oh man. Well, today was not the norm. Um, I was, I caught, um, an early morning flight at the butt crack of dawn back <laughs> to, excuse my language from, um, Denver to Minneapolis. I was there with some friends. So my alarm went off at three. Whoa. Not a morning person, but when I got to the airport, I had, um, a piece of string cheese and a little thing of almonds and then, uh, a coffee. But m normally I would wake up and I'd watch, CBS, the 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. news, make some matcha or coffee, depending on how much of a kicker I need. And then I'm on a big avocado, just eating like an avocado with, do you guys have Trader Joe's in, in Canada? We don't, but I know of Trader Joe's. Okay, so they have this everything bagel seasoning. If you've never tried it, I'm literally going to send you something in the mail, so <laughs> let me know. And it's so good. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, that's so tasty. I know avocado, everything. And then I'm curious, how do you make your matcha? Yeah, I just have one of those electric teapots. So I put some manuka honey, sometimes vanilla, and then some doTERRA lavender essential oil. Oh, nice. Um, and then just mix it all in and then do a little like almond or coconut creamer and call it a day. Nice. Oh, that sounds good. And I never even thought of the lavender essential oil. That sounds really beautiful. Sounds really, it's really delicious. Cool. Oh yeah. That sounds very gourmet. I'm very impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's about as much as I can make. So I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also before we chat further in the conversation, I would love for you to share your core values with us and how you describe them in your own language, because I know that you're also a big fan of the bliss work and that's been such a, like a pivotal thing for both of us. So can you share more on that? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to. First off is creativity. Um, that's a huge one for me. So I always think, feel the fear and do it anyways. Mm -hmm. um, because whether it's putting like one of my photographs or a blog post or just anything that I've created, it's always scary, but it's really fun to share with other people. And so, yeah, anytime I can be using creativity, whether it's at work for fun, reading, writing, designing yoga classes, even crafting, I'm very content. Another one is curiosity. Mm. Um, so one of my favorite sayings is stay curious, stay human. So I ask a lot of questions <laughs> and, and I'm always seeking out opportunities to learn Another one for me is connection. So that can be like family, friends, students, coworkers, anything like that, but really making nourishing those relationships a priority um, and being really generous with my time and attention so I can listen, I can support. And then passion. Mm. That's a big one for me. So it's just something that I always say is pursue what makes you feel alive. And that's what I live to do. So and that's why I have all these little side hustles, but it keeps it interesting. And I'm really in love with everything that I'm doing right now. So that is really big for me right now. Oh, I love and that. Then, yeah, thank you. And my last one is nature. So in the rapid fire, I said Matt. I love them. Um, hiking, camping, walking around the lakes with my dog, just breathing fresh air. So it definitely doesn't always happen every day in Minnesota. Sometimes it's too cold for me to even consider going outside. But as much as I can, I like to be outside. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, those are great. And it's so true. Like the nature one, we always sort of forget. Like just like that time out in the fresh air is just so nourishing and supportive. So I love that you have that in your in your values. And yeah, you got great values. I love asking this question because I'm like, ooh, these are all so good. <laughs> I know every time I hear someone else's, I'm like, oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I always so curious to hear because I also, I also think it shares so much about a person and what's important to them. And I feel like you can get such a good sense of who they are and how they structure their life from the values they pick. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to talk to you about a couple of different concepts with you on the pod. And the first one being nourishing female relationships, because um, I know you had said that this was part of your core values and I met you through Rock Your Bliss. And I feel like this was such a process for me and this idea and this coming home to this. And I really resonated with one of your blog posts. You're a great writer, by the way. You write in a really, you write like in kind of like an Emily style where it's funny and it's really engaging and you read it really quickly. (laughs) Thank you. That means the world. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. But in one of your posts, you shared this. You said, I was quite frankly terrified of other women for most of my life. So what did this process of unlearning and relearning look like to you? Oh boy. Yeah. So I think, I mean, we all have our insecurities, but I think that once I realized that other women's um, or just other people's successes didn't take away from my own, which seems really simple, but until you can really internalize that, it's it's a huge shift. So Mm -hmm. it all started to change once that happened. And it forced me to really take a look at my fears and my doubts and my own insecurities. And I was kind of at that crossroads where I was like, okay, Do I make a conscious decision to let them influence my relationships or do I just kind of say fuck it and do the work and lean into those just to kind of see what that feels like and what that can look like if I'm not letting them influence relationships and how I'm living my life. And so rather than being intimidated, I started to look to other women for inspiration and support um, and really lean on them with my own personal development and my values and my goals and my vision. Um, And it's a process in that, you know, again, everything's just a practice. So I'm constantly learning about how to move around my insecurities and to really push for community and collaboration over competition or anything like that. And it's been really fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that because I think this idea and this notion of community versus competition is a process for many of us. I mean, the like the first sentence you just shared right out of the gate that this idea that if one woman is doing something, it doesn't take something away from you. Like, OMG, I did not know that in high school. Like I was like a competitive little human and Oh my goodness. It's so easy sometimes when you don't have the tools and you don't know any better and you have like weird social norms and stigmas about other girls and female relationships. It can really feel like you're competing for something when in fact you're not. So thank you for sharing that. I think that would resonate with a lot of listeners too. Yeah, absolutely. And you put it a great way. That's I I was in the same boat for many, many years. Yeah. So what was kind of like the turning point when you realized that there was sort of another way to do it, that there could be collaboration and that when people work together, it actually builds even more. Yeah. I'm not going to say that it was Instagram itself, but when Instagram started to become big, I just started to go down the rabbit hole of all of these people. So, you know, I found Jackie and Mary Beth and, you know, every time I followed someone else, I followed five other people. I went through and just looked for people that looked really inspiring and that were essentially just up to really cool shit and creating shift in the world and just seeing what other people were doing, even just through social media, people that I wouldn't have been connected to otherwise, that was actually a little bit of a catalyst for me to just look and just to be able to see like the the whole depth of how much there's going on out there and everyone's doing. Um, and rather than letting that feel constricting or like I felt behind, it was a big push for me to, again, look at those insecurities and then decide how I wanted to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I like that you shared that Instagram was the catalyst because I think it can be really easy for the shoe to be on the other foot where it's like, oh my God, 
Instagram makes me feel like I am the last person. I am far behind. Everybody else is doing it amazing. So I really appreciate the fact that you've, you found that lens because it's so true. Like I love, I also try to use Instagram like that because I mean, Instagram is a slippery slope and and like a late night evening Instagram scroll, like 11 PM, I'm going to start dipping into like self-comparison and competition. But like, I really, really try to do what you were just sharing about having it as a really positive space and following the people that I love. And like, I feel uplifted when I go on versus in like a weird judgy state or like an uncomfortable thing. So I really like that you, you shared that. Yeah. Um, and don't get me wrong. I have my moments, you know, it's a double-edged sword and you have to be really mindful about what you consume and what your eyeballs are on. But overall, I look to it for inspiration. But I definitely go down the rabbit hole of being like, oh my gosh, what am I doing when all these people are doing those cool things? But it's just catching yourself in the moment and then making that conscious shift to look at it from a different perspective. Mm, I like that. Do you say anything to yourself when you make that little shift? Like, what does that look like for you? Because I think that's such a good tool and a gift to have. Yeah, again, I'll probably say this 25 more times during our little chat, but it's practice Mm -hmm. um, and progress, but it's, it's not perfect at all. But I think it's more about tapping into how I'm feeling. And then when I can recognize that I quite frankly feel like shit, or I'm feeling insecure, just even closing it, putting it down, going and reading or going outside or doing something else and then coming back to it, just feeling refreshed. So doing something to recharge and kind of nourish myself. And then, you know, the the self-talk, I'm working on that. It's not always very nice. It's usually like, okay, get your shit together, Jenna, but um, depends on the day. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really like that you shared that because I think that little gauge of how you feel is so powerful. And sometimes it can kind of all mush together if you don't take that quick second to check in and be like, oh, how am I feeling? So thank you for sharing that with us because I think that's such a a good little nugget and one that sometimes we can miss because Instagram can always be like an endless, <laughs> an endless scroll mm-hmm. and like a binge watch of all of the Instagram stories at once. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I try to really limit myself on Instagram stories and that's like, I'm allowed to watch like only a couple people that really inspire me. But if I start looking at like strangers, Instagram stories, I'm like, okay, okay. I've gone too far. <laughs> it's yep. time to stop. It's so hard. And you know, to give ourselves a little credit here, it's built to be addictive. Yes, so it's totally. not, you know, <laughs> it's not our fault. It's like, it's definitely all, all how it's done. And it's with the intention of being addictive. So it's just, it's not us. It's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know that you and I are both big into the Rock Your Bliss program and the teachings. And I know you're also part of MB's yoga mentorship program. So how has learning from female teachers specifically really shifted your perception of women? Oh, that's a really good one. Yes, I am a Rock Your Bliss fangirl. I mean, I should honestly just get it tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> oh my God, me too. You and me, we're going to get it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll do it. Jackie MB, watch out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think, and it's so cool. I've got to follow them since really they created Rock Your Bliss and I've done individual coaching with both of them. I've done seven weeks to bliss. I was in Ojai taking photos and experiencing the magic there for their retreat and Mary Best yoga mentorship program. And I think the biggest thing for me would have to be just being able to see and experience um, how women can be so diverse and be so many things all at once. So um, soft and strong, smart and silly, powerful, but kind, adventurous and grounded compassionate and fierce and the list goes on but like women are a fucking force to be reckoned with and that is something that I have learned over and over again through all of these different experiences through Rock Your Bliss and then through women that I've met through Rock Your Bliss. Mm, I love that that is so beautiful Jenna I so appreciate that and I like that so much because it's so true I feel like when you shared that I was like oh my god yes that women can be multi- faceted and that there are many different types of women and amazing female leaders and what that looks like versus how I grew up thinking that it should be like I had a very specific and narrow definition of what it looked like to be a female leader in 
in like whatever, like high school and university and then post university. And it was so narrowly defined. And yeah, Rock Your Bliss just totally expanded my view of like what I would want out of a role model or a leader or a teacher or how it could be in like so beautiful and human. And it didn't have to look like suits. It didn't have to look like having your hair in like a slick ponytail or wearing heels or like being a certain way or managing things in a certain place. Like I was like, oh my God, this is like, where has this been my whole life? I, and I so love that you share that. Yeah. So what does female friendship look like to you now? I would consider my female friends, my mirrors. I look to them. I mean, a huge source of inspiration for me. A lot of unconditional love and support, definitely lots of admiration and mutual respect, accountability, um, listening, sharing, growing together, play, adventure, and exploring, lots of big belly laughs. That's like my big thing. And then um, definitely mischief in the mix there. (laughs) (laughs) I love that mischief. Yeah. And I like how you shared big belly laughs because I feel like I always get such a smile when I look at your Instagram profile. It's so happy. And I feel like you always have the most gorgeous, radiant smile. And it just makes me happy when I look at it. And I can feel that you're having fun doing whatever you're doing. Good. (laughs) But it comes, it comes through. You know, I'm glad it translates that way because I do have a lot of fun, but a lot of times I'm very uncomfortable in front of the camera. So I'm just laughing because I feel so awkward, but it's good that it. (laughs) I would have never, yeah, I would have never guessed. I would have thought that you like, seriously, that you're like a natural, like to me, it just looks (laughs) like you are a pro in front of the camera. Well, I'm, That's very interesting that it comes off that way. (laughs) Yeah, that's another thing, like how we see ourselves through our social media channels versus how people perceive us. That can be so fascinating because so many times I have like podcast guests on like like you, Jenna, and I like reflect something to them and they're like, oh, I didn't know it came across like that. Or I didn't know that you saw me as like somebody that's good at surrendering. Or I didn't know that you saw that me as like somebody that's really like calm and um, supportive. And it's sometimes we can like forget little things about ourselves or we don't see our own gifts or we don't always like fully recognize our greatness. So I think it's always important to take, take like a second to tell people like, you know, you're actually doing a really good job or like, this is actually, you know, coming across like this and you are like radiant and you're doing a really great job. And sometimes we just, we don't know unless other people tell us like I had, oh my gosh, it was Jess Robson. She was sharing to me after we got off a podcast episode and she's like, wow. She's like, you are really great at interviewing. And I was like, oh my God, really? Like, thank you. Because so so often we don't take the time to like compliment each other or like give like ourselves. Yeah. Or ourselves. And we kind of don't see it. So I, I love that. And I love that fact about you that you just irradiate so much like light and positivity and your Instagram profile always inspires me. So I'm going to let you know that one for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So I also wanted to talk to you today about abandoning perfectionism and sort of losing this concept of it having to be perfect all the time. I know that kind of, I mean, for me and my story, it was like definitely a learning lesson. And being a female, I felt like I had to be perfect all the time. I felt like that was some sort of norm that I needed to uphold. And one of my favorite blog posts that you wrote, actually when we were still in level one together, of, or seven weeks of Rock Your Bliss, your blog post called Fuck Perfect. And you shared this. It says, I was in a constant state of disappointment, not only from letting myself down, but being let down by others because of my high, unrealistic expectations. Can you deep dive on this, on this concept of, perfectionism and expectation as a relationship? Yeah. Let's hope this makes sense. (laughs) Um, You know, it's always weird when it's in your head and then it comes out and you're like, did I just say that? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Well, so when I realized that perfectionism and expectations are so often inextricable, it was one of those big, you know, like aha light bulb moments for me. And I just want to be clear, there is no such thing as perfect, at least not in the conventional sense. So when I was always looking to be and experience perfect, um, it just set me up for one letdown after another, as you can imagine, because again, like, 
perfect isn't a thing. And then letting go of the idea of perfect has been so freeing um, and has helped me to be so much more present to my life and all these experiences as they unfold and to really appreciate things for, you know, at face value for what they are. And so I've learned to embrace the mess because life is very messy in only the best ways um, and to love every moment of it. And once you let go of the expectations of perfect people or perfect things or perfect encounters, it's really when you can start experiencing life fully um, and to cultivate a sustainable sense of just joy and content. Yeah, that's great. I like that. And I liked what you shared about embracing the mess versus like trying to make it all perfect and organized (laughs) Mm because it can be so easy to try to try to force it into this very tidy like Marie Kondo style of everything goes here and this is how my life is and nothing can be out of place and I just I like that so much so how have you learned to reclaim what's real for you and reclaim that that truth of embracing the mess and being okay with it Yeah, um, I am still learning moment by moment and every day. um, But core values have been huge for me. A lot of people, you know, like in Rock Your Bliss, and whenever I hear about core values, a lot of people refer to them as the true North Compass. And I don't think that could be more true. Um, It's so nice to have them around all the time. So you can kind of realign and reassess and figure out why you're doing something or why you're not doing something. And so another big part of that is with the guidance of core values, just really tapping into what I want and what I need and giving myself the permission to be where I am and want and need those things and just being myself. So, you know, for me, it's really hard to oddly want what I want. Sometimes I get so caught up in what other people's want and what works for other people um, and what looks really sexy and shiny and sparkly. But sometimes that's not always in alignment with who I am as a person. And a big part of that also is those female friendships, leaning into that and learning and growing with other females has been huge in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. And the the concept that you shared about checking back in with your values and not just picking what is shiny and sexy because that's an easy default for me when I'm not living in alignment with my values and I'm not taking that second to be like, oh, well, what do I need versus like, what are other people doing or how should I be doing it or how should my thing look or how should my business be or what should my life look like according to, you know, the explore page on Instagram with everybody looking like hot (laughs) and making a million dollars all the time. (laughs) And I just love that. And then I'm also kind of curious about those moments when you come back to your values, like what does that values conversation look like in your head? You know, I want to say that it's just really automatic and easy, but sometimes it, it isn't. And so it's, I mean, it's sometimes it's as simple as like flipping to that page in my notebook where I have my values and the definitions. And along with that, I have my vision and my goals. Cause again, it can be so easy to get caught up in the hustle and life and everybody else's wants and needs. And so looking at my notebook or physically like taking the time to write them out again, I think that is huge for me. The physical part of just writing it down and having it there in front of me. Mm. And so it's something that seems like it should always be easy, but I'm learning that sometimes it is and sometimes it's not. And neither way is good or bad. It just is what it is. So just being okay with, okay, today is harder for me to, give myself what I want or allow myself to need what I need. Mm. But other days it's a breeze. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so beautiful, Jenna. That idea that, well, for starters, to have a physical place for it to live because I'm so like you where I need to look back at stuff. Like I have to go pull out my spiral notebook with like the pretty leaves on the cover (laughs) and be like, (laughs) okay, let's go back to basics. And I think it's so important when we share that it's not always easy or it's not always instant. And like, even though we have this awareness and we've done this work, it's like still a practice. Like you shared, I, I think it's so, I mean, it's so common for me to just want to be like, okay, like why have I not mastered this yet? Or how come I'm not able to like shift out of this so quickly or, you know, be difficult on myself that I'm not 
as whatever developed or elevated as I want. And I sometimes my ego can really like shit all over me for that, for being not perfect all the time. And I think what you shared was so beautiful and it would resonate with so many listeners because it can feel like everybody else has has their shit together and like they know what they're doing and it can be like oh my god how come I'm the only one that has to keep going back to the dang notebook so (laughs) thank you for sharing that I I really appreciate that yeah you also shared in that blog post that you said abandoning perfection is not like flipping a switch at least for me it isn't it's more of a practice something that I must hold myself accountable for and work for every moment of the day so can you share more about what that daily practice looks like when it comes to being real? Sure. Definitely a lot of overlap from the previous question. So core values and strong females, you can never have too many strong females in your life. That is something I've learned. Vision and goal work. You know, I I, I came into that work at Lululemon when I worked there back in the day for many years. And then um, I've had the pleasure of experiencing vision and goals through Jackie um, and Rock Your Bliss and so many different avenues. So that has been huge having accountability buddies and so many permission slips so for me you know on any given day at every any given moment it could be permission to be messy permission to be unapologetically myself permission to make mistakes um, and really own what I want and what I need at any given point because like I was saying I've find it really easy to fall into the trap of wanting what other people want or what they have, even though it's not necessarily in alignment with my goals or what I want. So yeah, just taking the time to take a step back from all of it and just be like, okay, hit the pause button and going back to those things that fill you up, you know, your core values, whether that's nature or taking a bubble bath or you know, going to the gym, anything like that, um, making those a priority has also really helped. Mm -hmm. Those are great. Yeah. And I really liked your permission slips to embrace the mess and to be human and that it's okay for it to look a certain way on a certain day. So I really, I really like that you shared that you have great nuggets. FYI, you got, you, you (laughs) are got all the truth bombs, my friend. (laughs) Oh boy. I'm all about the nuggets. (laughs) So do you have like a, a reminder or a mantra that you use to be open wide and human in those moments, sort of when you'd prefer to contract or shy away or like appear as if everything is perfect? Yes. So going back to what I said in my core values, a big one for me is feel the fear and do it anyways. Mm. So vulnerability is fucking hard. (laughs) Courage is hard. Facing your fears is the hardest, but I've come to look at fear in a different way where it can be extremely telling and useful depending on your perspective and how you choose to move forward with that. You know, life is just too short not to tell you know, someone that you adore them or to take the risk or go on the adventure. And so however terrifying something might feel, and it might feel like a risk, the reward is just going to be so much more extraordinary. And so coming back to that and just being like, okay, you know, this is what I need to do. And whatever happens is going to happen. And I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that concept of feeling the fear and doing it anyways, like feeling it, owning it, acknowledging this here, and then choosing to move forward anyways. I think that's such a perfect mantra. It's also like a really easy, tangible mantra to like pull out in the moment. Cause sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm like, shit, I don't know what to say to myself right now. Or like, it'll come out in kind of some sort of other sort of coachy jargon, but I love just <laughs> feel the fear and do it anyways. Cause we all have yeah, that short little... and sweet. Yeah, totally. That's perfect. Thank you. I love what you had to share about female relationships and perfectionism and embracing the mess. And I also want to talk to you and do a total pivot in the conversation and chat with you about time. Good old time. You had um, another post where you were talking about having a bad relationship with time. And this has been really top of mind lately as I have been rewriting all of my stories. Um, And after I rewrote my money story, I was like, oh shit, I got to rewrite my time story because they sound very similar. (laughs) (laughs) So you wrote, I have been thinking a whole lot about time lately and I've been actively working to change my relationship with it. 
Can you share more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I often find myself feeling like I don't have enough time or that time is slipping through my fingers. Um, and that usually leads to me just generally feeling behind in life. Um, and like, I need to play catch up. So again, kind of like with a comparison trap, you know, going on Instagram and seeing all those people doing these cool things. And you're like, well, you know, I'm working my job and I eat cereal for breakfast and then I'm going to go work out and then go to bed, you know? So the idea of not having enough time or moving too quickly, anything like that, that leads me to say yes to everything and we're busy like a a badge of honor, like saying like, I, Hey, I'm a doer, you know? And so when this happens, I don't set or respect my boundaries with work. And so I'm always checking your responded emails that seriously, like, it doesn't matter if it's two in the afternoon or like 1130 when I'm going to bed, if I see something come in, I'll answer it because there's always something to do. And I, I, I feel like I'm lacking in time. So I try to do as much as I can all at once, all the time. When I feel like I'm multitasking, you know, in the moment I can convince myself that I'm being efficient and that it's really good for me. But I don't, when I'm multitasking and when I'm trying to fit it all in all the time, I'm not listening intentionally and I don't show up for the people in my life in the way that I could be and I know how to. And so it's the gnarliest feeling. I'm working on rewriting my beliefs and shifting my perspectives and reclaiming my relationship with time just by like a big thing for me is just monotasking. Mm. So like right now talking to you, you know, maybe six months or a year ago, I'd be like the TV would be muted in the background. I'd have like my messages pulled up or like scrolling Instagram, but none of that. So I'm all here right now. But just like I've said a million times already, this episode or this chat is it's a day by day, minute by minute practice that is admittedly a shit ton of work, but I'm (laughs) really committed to it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, my God. It totally is a shit ton of work. Like I it definitely, (laughs) definitely takes time and investment and effort and attention. And it's always a journey and a process, this process of shifting anything in your life, whether that's like changing jobs or changing your relationship with money. It takes time or changing your relationship with time. It all takes effort and attention. And it's not always this quick fix or five instant hacks to mastering your relationship with time <laughs> <laughs> or like a two minute read on uh, medium or anything. It, it's something that is a process and a journey and a continual unfolding. So I really like that you keep reiterating that because Loving the process has been a process for me. (laughs) Sidebar, I love your Canadian accent. It is so cute. The process. I mean, I have got, I've got the Minnesota accent. Oh God, that sounded, I've got the Minnesota. Oh gosh. Now I can't say it without, got the Minnesota accent. Um, And so I think a lot of people group the the Canadian and the Minnesota accent together, but there's definitely a little difference and I, I love hearing it. Oh, thank you. That's so funny because when we first started chatting, I was like, oh my gosh, I can really hear the American <laughs> accent. And it's so, it's so funny because I always forget that I have an accent and to me it sounds just like everybody else. So when people are like, oh, you have a cute accent, I always, I always feel really special. So thank you. (laughs) It's always funny when, when people compliment you on accents, when you feel like it's totally normal. Like when I'm sure you felt the same when I'm like, I love your American accent or like, I can hear it or it's so cute. And you're like this thing, I, (laughs) I never think about this, but yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I really, I really liked what you also had shared about this concept of time and feeling like we need to speed up and like we're behind and then other people have gotten farther in a shorter amount of time. And like, there's that sort of weird dynamic of where am I in my life in comparison to others in this like duration of time. And I thought that was such an interesting, fascinating piece that you brought up because one of my big self comparison little parts that just kind of can be really sticky if I don't control it is like the oh look what those people have accomplished in that amount of time or why am I not there or like like Ruby Kerr is 25 um and I'm like no oh my way God. yeah she is She's holy 25. crap yeah exactly so wow. I know and <laughs> like 
I can be in, in a good, in my best self is like, she's amazing. She's doing it at 25. And then if it's like midnight and I'm like, oh my God, she's doing it at 25. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> this concept of time and then self-comparison just sort of weaves in hand in hand. And I like that you share that because I think that's a spot that would be like, oh, me too. Or like, I so feel that way that a listener would be listening along and thinking like, oh my God, thank you. I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do you catch your breath and like embody the present moment when you feel like everything's really full or busy or speeding up? Yeah. So I hit the pause button and what that currently looks like for me right now is really cranking up the self-care because I always think of the idea of like, oh, I can sleep when I'm dead. And I think that applies to just so many of the pleasurable things in life. And, you know, it's like, okay, like, you know, I can have fun or take a nap or this like later, like there, there'll be time for that, but I have to work now and I have to hustle. And I just think that is you know, if you take that to heart, like I do, it's so backwards. And so I come back to just those things that actually recharge my batteries. So like, I try not to watch as much Netflix, which, you know, there's a time and a place and that can be great. But going back to my personal yoga practice, napping, writing, just playing, you know, you can't pour from an empty cup. That's been a huge learning for me because I try so hard to run on empty as long as I can. And sometimes I push myself to the point of physical exhaustion and, you know, it manifests itself physically and I get sick and then I have to be like, okay, you know, what needs to change? And when I go back to the self-care routine, I can show up healthy, fully and joyfully to the party that is now. And then just being grateful for what I have and making time every day to write those things down. Because again, I'm old school and I like to have something physical to like grab or touch or feel. And that's been a huge game changer for me. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, that concept of self-care. And I also like to have stuff that's physical, especially in this digital world where everything is like another Google drive. It's like, okay, pen to paper. <laughs> like I can't keep track of it all. Yeah, totally. What other kind of self-care activities do you do? I feel like self-care can be such a lofty word or like a, I dry brush three times a day, <laughs> <laughs> but like what, or like some like tangible things that you can really go to in the moment when shit's kind of hitting the fan. Yeah. Yoga. I mean, that's, you know, maybe that's running or, you know, physical activity is a huge one for me. So that could be hiking, walking, yoga, not sparkly or shiny or sexy by any means, but I've been going to a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, have been going in for my checkups, getting my teeth cleaned, those kinds of things kind of seem like a hassle. And, you know, again, they're just kind of mundane things, but I actually feel noticeably better when I am just constantly in the practice of doing those little things, even though, you know, you think of a bubble bath mm -hmm. or, you know, like treat yourself and that is all great. You know, I get a massage not as much as I should or being a yoga teacher and doing as much yoga as I do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it doesn't always feel like self-care, but that doesn't mean it isn't. Mm, I love that because it's so true. Cause when we're really out of it and we're paying attention to everybody else's needs, those bits totally go like the dentist appointments and like, I mean, nothing even remotely closely to massage, but like dentist doctor like that stuff can really all fall by the wayside when you're not tuning in and checking in so I really love that you shared that because I think that's such a gorgeous thing and even though it's so yeah. simple and not sexy it like speaks volumes and you really do feel so much better when you have the little stuff in place like the doctor's appointments or the dentist appointments and you're like I took an hour to get my teeth cleaned or like I took two hours and like I did this for myself and it doesn't even matter if it's sexy or not, but like it's taking care of, of yourself or even if it's just your teeth, but like kind of that message that you send to the universe that like I am important and I go in the calendar too. So thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. This concept of really slowing down and being good to myself has been a big lesson for me too. So what do you do when you need to really slow your brain down? Is there anything specific that you do to like ground and take a deep breath? That is a good question. 
I would say monotasking, which mm-hmm. is so novel to me because my whole life, I'm like, oh yeah, my middle name's, you know, multitasking. I've always, I've always been very prideful in the fact that I considered myself a multitasker, which at the end of the day, no one is, but I digress. And so, yeah, it's like, okay, if I'm, you know, sitting down in the morning, I'm trying not to check my phone while I toggle between, you know, my email and all these other things and just watch the news or like just eat a meal and not have to have music on even or driving silently in the car or if I'm with someone like either putting my phone on airplane mode which I've been doing more or silencing it and having it out of sight out of mind Uh, the phone is is a big one for me I get very sucked into that I've been actively working on breaking up with my phone on a daily basis for at least a few hours and it has been huge for me and then sleep (laughs) that's a huge one for me Mm, nice those are good ones i i so am with you on the monotasking and breaking up with the phone my god the phone geez the phone is totally another one of those double-edged swords and having that space and time away from it is so critical do you like Mm -hmm. set times to have your phone like in another room or like do you stick it on airplane mode? Like, are there any little practical things that you do? Or do you set like an alarm to take some space from your phone or anything? It does actually come to a timer sometimes. So yes, I can be like, okay, timer's on two hours. Or this, you know, actually just physically leaving my phone when I can is really good for me because sometimes I physically feel like I'm missing like an arm when I, you know, leave my apartment without the phone or leave it in my car. But I never miss it and I never regret it. So just reminding myself to do that more so it doesn't even have to be this thing where I think about it or where I feel like, you know, at first I'm being ripped, ripped apart from something. <laughs> hmm. Those are great. And I think I wanted to ask because I think so many people in this conversation that a lot of us are having is this like, I want to get off my effing phone. I want to stop using it. But the how equation can be a little bit difficult when we're all so addicted to it. And you're so right. It feels like another limb (laughs) and it can be like something's not there. So I think, yeah, that idea of just like leaving it at home and going for a walk, I think is a really good practical nugget because the phone addiction is a real one. (laughs) Oh, yes. Oh, another thing is that I have now in the mornings, I am not allowed to check my phone for an hour from when I wake up until I check it. And then I am not allowed to be in my bed and scroll on my phone anymore. Mm. And that's hard. Again, it's, you know, sometimes I catch myself in the act, you know, I'm, you know, 20 minutes in, I didn't even realize it, but just even starting with those small tangible goals, like, okay, yeah, like an hour, you know, before I go to bed. And when I wake up, I don't have my phone. It's so much easier once you get into the, the habit of it. Yeah, totally. That evening bedtime scroll has been one that I have personally been really working on because I really do try most of the times to put the phone plugged in on airplane mode in the kitchen and then go to bed but sometimes the phone will come with me to bed and then I know like I'm doing it but it's like I like (laughs) just follow somehow (laughs) it totally does and it's like I turn a blind eye to it and I'm like oh I'll make up some stupid excuse like I have to post the photo on Instagram stories (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and it's like no Kelly you don't stop <laughs> but yeah so I feel like this is a good spot for us to wrap up so I just have a final quick couple of Q&A before we close so what would you say to someone who was just starting out on this journey of self-development the self-dev journey is wonderful and crazy and beautiful and of course really messy at times but stick with it Stay curious and ask all the questions. Go at your own pace. That's a big thing Mm. um, that I think we've kind of touched on and allowing yourself to let things marinate and make sense or not make sense. And then, you know, being, I guess, courageous enough to be like, okay, that's not for me, but I'll, you know, look over here, see what's over here. And then just being open to try on different ways of being and seeing until you find out what works for you and just not feeling shame or guilt when something doesn't work out because, you know, if nothing, um, you're going to learn something from, you know, anything. Mm -hmm. That was so beautiful and perfect. I think that 
just summed up everything really well. You're a wordsmith, Jenna. That was so eloquent. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of your favorite life-changing reads and resources? Oh, man. Okay, I'll keep this one short, too. Obviously, rock your bliss. Anything that they do. I swear, y'all, I'm not being paid. All right? <laughs> I'm just fangirling real hard. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> you know, these women have transformed my life. And then all these people that I met through them have transformed my life. And so, um, yeah, rock your bliss podcasts to online programs to, you know, physical in real life retreats and workshops, anything that works for you, you know, like finding some woman or some guy or, you know, someone that you look up to and using them for inspiration. That is huge. And books. Well, yoga, of course, that's a big one for me because, you know, it's that cheesy thing where I'm getting sidetracked. But with yoga, it's like, you know, you're truly your own teacher. And so much of what you seek outside of yourself or you think you do, you already have inside of you, but you just mm -hmm. don't know it until. And it's one of those things where you can't really explain until you experience it. It just kind of clicks. Mm -hmm. uh, but back to books. I just finished The Originals by Adam Grant. Have you heard about that one? No, I haven't. You would love it. So add that to your list for sure. <laughs> it's a fun read and it's really interesting. It's um, one of those books that are, do you know, like Malcolm Gladwell, mm -hmm. Tipping Point, mm -hmm. kind of similar to that. And so, yes, I recommend that to everyone. And Defining Decade is something that I'm kind of simultaneously switching between defining decade and come as you are. But yeah, podcasts, books, I mean, just for, you know, for me, it's what resonates with me. So like, I love to read, and I also love to hear people's voices. So that makes sense to me. But going back to kind of the advice or to someone on the journey is just find what works for you and just keep pursuing that and finding as much of that as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that piece about finding what works for you versus like, even though it might work for so many other people, like I've been in programs where everybody's been loving it. And I'm like, um, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> and then you feel like you were like weird or like the lone wolf, but I love that you shared that find what sticks for you and is in the way that you enjoy reading it. Cause that makes the world of the difference. And then lastly, if listeners want to connect online, where is your favorite place for them to say hi? Oh yes. Clearly I'm a big Instagram girl. Um, <laughs> Otherwise, I love good old fashioned emails. Mm. Um, you know, I have a few email pen pals that I connect with. But if people, you know, feel so inclined, and they want to kick it really old school with me, I always love handwritten letters. I am always looking for snail mail friends. So that is always an offline option as well. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Jenna. This was such a treat and a pleasure to talk to you. And I loved all of your beautiful moments of just like, oh my God, she gets me. <laughs> so thank you. Oh girl, I'm just, you can't see me obviously, but I'm blushing, but thank you. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. All right, my friends. And there you have it. That is the show for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. If you love this episode and Jenna's words totally hit home for you and you love the real talk, Make sure you take a screenshot of this and share it in your Instagram stories. Tag Jenna in it, tag me in it. And I'd love to hear what your biggest aha moment was, especially if you got a ton of massive value from this episode. So thank you so much for tuning in and for listening. And I'm so excited to hear your takeaways on Instagram. And until next time, have a lovely day. And I am so excited to catch you back here soon. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening today. If you love this episode, please take a second to share it with somebody that you know needs to hear this message. And if you feel so called and so moved, please write an honest review of what you think about this podcast in iTunes and leave me some stars. That would truly help me out on my journey to helping millions and millions of people. And until next time, have a lovely day and I'm so excited to see you back here soon.